This episode is brought to you by the Evansville Podcast Network. Go to evansvillepodcastnetwork.com for more information. Hello once again, Evansville Podcast people. My name is Jason Burton. This is Evansville Podcast. Thank you for listening. Thank you for downloading. Today's episode is a first for me, as you'll hear. Uh, it's the first time I've had a person that is running for governor uh, on the show, in my studio, all that. So that was pretty exciting. Um, Mr. Rex Bell stopped by to talk about his uh, campaign, his candidacy for governor of Indiana. But before we get into that, uh, this episode is brought to you by the Evansville Podcast Network. I don't know if you've heard the news, but we have started a network that is uh, consists of Mr. Josh Petrowski and his show that he hosts with Ryan Huff, the Brewers View Man Cave podcast. It's sports related. Uh, Clark Osborne, who does Clockwork Nights, which is a music podcast. And Laura Burton, who does Beyond Repair Show, which is a repair advice podcast life advice, relationship advice, show, and then, of course, Evansville Podcast, uh, which you are listening to currently. So please check it out. Go to EvansvillePodcastNetwork.com, and that will be the home base uh, in the near future. Currently redirects to EvansvillePodcast.com, but the information is available for the network shows on that page right now. So uh, in the future, it will be the hub of all the network activity so please check it out bookmark it all that stuff and now let's get into the rest of the show with rex bell and we do appreciate uh mr bell stopping by and talking with us about about running for governor so let's get into it well this is a first for me i've never had someone run for governor uh, on my podcast or in my house or uh, anything. <laughs> really? <laughs> so I'm saying. Uh, this is a first for me that okay. I've had people. Yeah. Uh, you know, when I ran for office before, it was just me. Yeah. And when I found out that, uh, found out on a statewide campaign, you get people, it's uh, unbelievable. Like, you're like, what were we doing this whole time? <laughs> Uh, yeah, you've run for uh, what state representative yes. a couple times. Yeah, okay. So you're you're not unfamiliar with the the, the political game. No, I've uh, been in it for a while, and yeah, uh, you know we've had some success at uh, at the local level. So Mrs. Bell is a political dynasty. Yes, my wife is the elected uh, town court judge in Hagerstown oh, as a libertarian. Very nice, a, a libertarian judge. Yep, that would be. I never quite. Uh, some of the, the, the like, like uh, let's say, coroner, for example, never quite understood why we needed a Republican or a Democrat or a Libertarian for there. But no. Judge, I, I guess I can kind of see that. Um, so I had a couple questions, if that's all right. Sure. Um, first thing, when I, do, I was doing just a little bit of research, because uh, I wanted to prepare a little bit, um, I noticed there was a big discrepancy on one of the articles about funds. And I guess that's one of my questions to you is like, as a libertarian, it seems like there's a, a challenge for, to get the word out maybe, or to, to, you know, uh, I guess the Republicans, Democrats, they kind of have that money thrown at them. <laughs> almost. So how do you, how do you overcome that? I guess. Well, and I've uh, mentioned before, you know, when I've, I've been involved in this for 16 years and when I started, um, you know, basically what we had was, uh, TV and newspapers. Sure, yeah. And if you didn't have, like, the the big parties now in the governor's race, they have uh, $18 million that they're going to spend on it. Yeah. So, you know, when we come in with, you know, just a pretty small amount by, it might be a large amount by libertarian standards, but mm-hmm. by the old parties, it's quite a bit less. But we also have something going for us now. Um, uh, I've said before when when I first started, Al Gore hadn't invented the internet yet. So yeah, well, uh, you know, but now he has. Thank, thanks uh, to him. Man. Big <laughs> shout out to it's him. a big, uh, <laughs> it's a great equalizer. Yeah, uh, you know, we can go on the internet and for 
you know, $1,000, we can reach, uh, you know, a quarter of a million people, basically. It's right. the type of thing that we don't need that much money. Mm-hmm. Of course, we'd like to have more. would make it more even. But, uh, you know, podcasts like this that didn't exist 16 oh, sure. years ago when I started, right. uh, it wasn't available. You had to pay to get on the radio or right. beg them to cover you. Yeah. And, and we still uh, fight to be included in a lot of things, but mm-hmm. we also have options now that we didn't have back then. Uh, you know, when they talk about the difference in the money, uh, I hope people will look at that and see where that money comes from. Um, <laughs> when, the, you know, when the Democrats and Republicans uh, get a $100,000 donation from a company, that company's not giving that to them because they like them. In the goodness of their heart, right? Yeah, they're giving it to them because they're expecting yeah. something back. And, and when we come in funded by individuals, uh, you know, a lot of $20, $50, $100 donations, sure. that's where ours comes from. And it's from people that are concerned about government being for sale. Yeah. And if you don't think that it's for sale when a business gives a campaign $100,000, you're fooling yourself. Um. Uh, so as a libertarian, uh, it seems like there's a lot of uh, definitions for libertarian that go around. What, what's your your uh, go-to for describing uh, the libertarian platform or your beliefs, maybe? Nap. <laughs> the, the non-aggression principle. Okay. Oh. We don't believe that uh, anybody has the right to initiate force against somebody else. Um, we don't believe individuals have it. We don't believe the government has it. Um you know, you have the right to uh, look out for yourself. You have the right to defend yourself. Uh, if you want to join together with your neighbors and pool your money and have a uh, health care plan or you want to pool your money to have a, a retirement plan, that's up to you. You simply don't have the right to force your neighbors to do it. And that's, you know, basically what libertarian is to me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm libertarianism and and it's something that we all live in our private lives uh, you know if you don't get along with your neighbor you don't walk across the yard and you know threaten them and say if you don't do what i believe right. uh, i'm going to hit you in the head with a stick and put you in jail but when the government gets involved we do so uh, you know what we would like to see is government minimized to the duties of protecting us from force and fraud and other than that leave it up to people to make their own decisions okay um so uh the uh the presidential race kind of kind of consumes all everything right yes how hard is it to get the word out for your particular race um with this i I guess it kind of helps with that pence is involved so the the indiana name gets thrown out a lot but but yeah, it's like, it feels like that's all I ever hear about is just the presidents. That there's no doubt that it's taken the spotlight, uh, but I'm also encouraged uh, by the people that are finding out about libertarianism now because of that. Mm. Uh, you know, if it draws their attention and we get some of the reflection off of that, you know, I don't have a problem. We've been fighting for a long time uh, to make ourselves more known, and basically we'll take any help we can get on that and this was a this yeah. was a, a good year for the uh, national politics sure. to shine a light on us we've been through campaigns where it was totally up to us and you know i'm not i'm not overly concerned that he's going to get too much of the spotlight because uh, you know we've made enough gains in indiana indiana is one of the strongest states in mm-hmm. the country you know as far as libertarians go so yeah. so i think that's uh, something that we can all benefit from. Yeah. So, and I noticed that, uh, I mean, there was a question for the president side is like, are they going to be involved in the debates? But you're going to be in the debates, right, for the, the yeah. governors? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we start on uh, September 27th mm-hmm. is the first one in Indianapolis, and there's two more in October that they haven't set the dates for yet. Oh, okay. But, yeah, we're included in those. Yeah. Well, good. Congratulations. Well, thank you. We uh, – we feel a little vindication from that. Yeah, you know, I would think. Uh, yeah, because it's nice. To, I mean, you don't want it to money to be in charge of everything, right? And so, like, like yeah, it's a level playing field, and then you kind of have to prove yourself at that point, right? Yeah, yeah. We think that if we get a chance to present our ideas, there's a significant portion of the population that agrees with us. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if they don't know we're there, 
uh, you know, it doesn't. <laughs> right. you, you don't really get a chance to put that out there. Sure. Um, so uh, is are there any other challenges for running as a libertarian other than the just like, like raising money or awareness? Is there like a specific thing maybe? Well, you know, I think we, we run into a lot of uh, what government has convinced people of over the years. Uh, you know, if you look at uh, things the government does now that people just assume that's the only way it can happen. Uh, government's had a lot of time to make us dependent on them. And a lot of people, uh, you know, actually believe that nothing would happen if the government wasn't there to take care of it. You know, one of my favorite uh, phrases is name three things that the government doesn't tax or regulate. <laughs> and it's it's hard to do. And even if people can't name anything, they can't name anything that government could drop, you know, because it's so ingrained in them that government's going to take care of it or has to take care of it. So that's one of the things we fight is educating people and getting them to stop and think, you know, as what we mentioned before, uh, how do you handle your private life? Yeah. Uh, you know, how much of that can we transfer over to the government that – uh, basically, you live and let live. If somebody's not harming you or harming somebody else, um, you know, do we want to put people in jail for a simple possession of something? And, and you know, as a libertarian, we'd say, no, we don't. If, if you're not harming someone, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you don't put them in jail for that. You don't use the force of government uh, for moral purposes that you think that this is— uh, you know, anything that you think is morally correct, the government should force you to uh, to adhere to that. So right. uh, that's something that we 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 have to battle. Uh, is basically the you know people's way of looking at government. Yeah, that um, it's just that's a monumental task because I mean I, I think anybody would agree that government's kind of out of control. But how do you <laughs> how do you rein that in? Right? Yeah, it, it's a it's a fight. If if it was easy, we'd have a bunch of libertarians in office so far. But but we're getting Fair closer enough. because people are starting to, yeah. you know, people are starting to wake up. Okay. Um, so, like um, Indiana specifically, because you're uh, from Indiana and uh, born and raised here. Right? Yes. Okay. So born in Millville, raised in Hagerstown. Okay. There you go. Um, so as far as like Indiana's future, like a roadmap, uh, what, what do you foresee for Indiana going forward? Um, I know that's a pretty vague question, but. Well, you know, I'd like to see it grow, uh, to some extent. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I've, I've read an article this morning, uh, you know, on Indiana's technology and those jobs that we've yep. created and businesses that we've created. And it talked about, uh, you know, people talk about Indiana, the wages being lower than mm -hmm. others around. Right. Uh, but I was reading an article and, and somebody that was involved in uh, uh, some business. And, and if you made $100,000 a year in Indiana and you lived in California, you'd have to make almost 300000 right. to cover that. So right. I don't really look at that as being a, a problem here. You know, I'd like people to... Uh, have better jobs and more jobs as they want them, and I think we can accomplish that. We've uh, we've suggested and put forth a plan to eliminate the property tax, mm -hmm. which would draw a lot of businesses into Indiana because that's uh, face it, that's how the government brings uh, businesses in. Any time the EDC gets ready to right. to uh, bring a business in, they promise them we're going to lower your property taxes for 10 years or whatever, and they're here for 10 years, and then they take off and leave. But right. but we think we can do away with the property tax, draw a lot of businesses into Indiana. Uh, you know, with that comes more jobs, and when we've got more jobs and there's a competition for workers and, and wages go up, we think we can solve a lot of the problems in Indiana and help Indiana grow mm -hmm. uh, by doing away with that property tax. Oh, Besides I, the fact yeah. that <laughs> we're not going to have to worry about somebody losing their home to the government if they fall on on hard times yeah well as someone who pays a high higher property tax than i was expecting because of an older home right yes yeah it happens it happens <laughs> you know and uh they put the caps on and then the assessed valuation goes up and you haven't gained a thing and and no matter if it was only a dollar it's still a matter of 
the government coming in and say you don't own your property you know we're going to we're going to charge you for living in your own house so we think that's wrong we think we could replace it with a sales tax a uh, cut back on government spending to where it just takes care of the essential constitutional duties and uh, do a sales tax that everybody pays okay so yeah and i hear that a lot from libertarians want to reduce government but uh, and most of the government stuff they usually say it's not necessary or whatever but what are the essential government things that you think like is there a couple of like is it is it the parks department is it the you know what what is the government's role in in helping out the well you know essentially it's protecting us from force and fraud Mm -hmm. so we've got a police department you know the fire department um you know would go that route. certainly in indiana there's a constitutional requirement that we uh, provide education uh, Mm -hmm. you know for anybody that wants an education um it doesn't necessarily specify how, you know, and I think there's a lot of different options that we need to explore for sure. education. Uh, definitely get the federal government out of it. Um, you know, return the control of the schools to local school boards and parents and teachers, that sort of thing, that mm-hmm. they can make some decisions and parents can make some decisions instead of allowing Washington to make those decisions. Yeah. Um, and one thing, going back to when you mentioned the tech jobs in, in – uh, and specifically, I think that's probably regarding Indianapolis. But there's a concept of brain drain that we feel around in Evansville, where you know, like our best and brightest, a lot of times will move away to some bigger city like Indianapolis or Nashville or wherever. Um, what do you? It, I mean, yeah, and it's a it's a, it's a one that we're all asking how do we stop that? But do you have any ideas for that? Maybe you know, I've got a, a son. And daughter-in-law and two grandchildren that moved to San Diego. So yeah. I would love to keep well, them here. I mean, here. <laughs> San Diego's got a lot of things. <laughs> it's got a lot to offer. <laughs> yeah. Can we import the weather for maybe? Is that, uh, that would be nice, you know. Yeah. But no, I, we can't do anything about the weather. We can do something about businesses locating here. Mm-hmm. Um, people leave. I'm not going to say that my son and daughter-in-law don't like the weather in California, but they moved out there for a job. And that's what people, when people leave and we talk about brain drain, uh, they're not leaving because it snows in the winter. They're leaving to get a better job. So if we can create a climate of more uh, Mm -hmm. business-friendly, do away with the property tax, get regulations down to where if if it's not protecting somebody, uh, you know, do we really need that? That much regulation, and we've talked about, uh, you know, people. A lot of people don't realize how much regulation there is until you, you know, you start up a business, the licensing and and the permitting process and all of that. Um, you know, I'm not saying that we throw everything out the window, but we need to examine some things. And if it's doing nothing more than adding another layer of uh, problems to a business that's trying to start, you know, we can do away with a lot of that. We can make uh, Indiana attractive enough for jobs that there'll be people staying here because the jobs will be here. Yeah. Um, you mentioned you, you have a, f- a favorite phrase earlier. Do you have any other quotes or sayings that you like to uh, uh, adhere by, I guess? Well, gosh, I don't know. I, I, I've said many times that uh, for a free society or free country, we spend too much time asking our government for permission. And, and I believe that, you know, it, it, you know what libertarians are about freedom individual freedom and individual responsibility so that's something i kind of push in everything we do every every uh proposal that we bring forth yeah uh you know we ask is it growing government or is it shrinking government is it increasing personal freedom or decreasing it and we try to make sure everything we look at and examine that way uh Mm -hmm. That it needs to be, it needs to be people oriented instead of government oriented. Hmm. Okay. Um, so, uh, if I, I have a couple of weird questions for you, is that okay? I love weird questions. All right. So, I still, if you don't mind weird answers, I, I'm hoping <laughs> those are ratings right there. Um, so, if when you hear the word successful, who is the first person that comes to mind? Oh, first person that comes to mind successful. I don't probably my dad, you know, he yeah. raised eight children. Um, they have, 
I think, 30-some grandchildren and 43-some great-grandchildren. It's just wow. when I look at somebody that um, started out basically with nothing, got married, worked hard, uh, never got to be a rich man, but he was he's had a good life and he's happy with his family so you know i put put more emphasis on that uh, okay i hope if i live to be 88 years old that i've accomplished as much as my dad has it's a lot of it's a lot of kids and grandkids it's a bunch of them <laughs> okay it's, i don't know if i got to keep track of the the names we have name tags at okay. christmas perfect perfect yeah. that's good that's very good um and what uh would you have any advice that you would give your 20 year old self uh pay attention more okay. i didn't start paying attention uh until i was you know 50 years old 48 years old before i really started paying attention and you let so much slip by uh, okay. i accepted sure. i accepted so much and i thought well this that's the way it is there's nothing we can do about it and i think any young people now i would tell them the same thing I would have told myself now. Get involved. Uh, pay attention. Say no once in a while, you know. There's there's something that there's something to be said for standing up uh, when the government comes in and, and tells you you're gonna have to do things that it's none of their business, you know. This is this is my life. I'll make this call. Yeah. And I and I think that's um, if we can get the government to back off uh, we can take care of most things ourselves. Okay. And I usually ask this about Evansville, but I want to ask about Indiana as, in general. You can pick any. You can pick your hometown or whatever. But is there something that Indiana doesn't have that you wish we had? Well, we mentioned San Diego weather. Well, yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I accept that. That's the right answer, I think. I, I like – but, <laughs> but I also like the change of the seasons if they just didn't yeah. last so doggone long. yeah. You know? Well, I think spring lasts for two weeks in Evansville, and then we're we're, we're on to summer. <laughs> but yeah, and winter lasts for a year, right? So. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know how the math works out on that. But I don't either. I think you're right? Yeah. No, I'm. Uh, you know, as I've lived here, lived in Indiana for sixty four years. You know, and yeah. uh, no desire to leave. Uh, yeah. Long about March, I get tired of winter. Long about August, I get tired of summer, but right. I know that if I can hang on long enough, you know, right. it's going to come back around. So it, it, it's got a lot to offer. Yes. Mr. Bell, I appreciate you stopping by here the, and uh, and chatting with me for a bit. Well, I appreciate you having me in. Oh, thanks, and uh, good luck in your run. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks again to Rex Bell for coming on the show. Uh, please check out EvansvillePodcastNetwork.com for all of the shows in the network and also for this episode if you want to check out the show notes for links to rex's website and other things please go to evansillepodcast.com and you will f and just do a search for rex bell you'll f you'll find it thanks good job everybody